Hello, everybody. We have 10 minutes here. Once again, with Ruben and Adam talking about traveling with firearms and ammunition. We've thus far discussed packaging and, and how, to, how to properly pack your firearms and ammunition in cases. Uh, mostly a lot of this related to flying. Um, doesn't hurt, though, when it comes to driving and whatnot as well. But Adam mentioned that he has quite a story. This is going to be a little 10-minute talk story time yes. with Adam about an experience that he had that hopefully we all can glean a little information and knowledge from. Yes. And now I think... There's a lot of like anecdotal horror stories that I think freak a lot of people out about mm-hmm. flying with guns. So just to square it to reference, this is how many firearms declaration cards I have for the last year. It's about a half inch thick. And this is really the only story of consequence that I have to have a bad experience. What That's a, a lot of declarations. And you I'll, just made it rain on me with I'll, them. I'll also <laughs> say that this story, the reason it's a good story is entirely my fault. Okay. I did not. I lost track of time and cut it way too close to get to the airport. All right. Return the rental car. Shuttle bus is pulling up to the terminal. Somebody had a cute baby, and everyone was like, oh, look at the baby, and trying to fold up the stroller, which apparently they'd never folded up before. Like, I'm in a hurry. Sure. sure. Um, so I'm showing up. I'm like... Probably because like, you stopped for burritos on the way. No, I was hanging out with Freilich and Dissident Arms. After a match. Ah, but, yeah. there classic. You know ah, classic. Relic. But so I'm about 20 minutes out from boarding time, which is way too close. Are you just entering the bus from the rental area? I'm just getting into the terminal. Oh, okay. You're too late, boy. Yeah. So I'm already <laughs> like. I'm stressed out right now just from that simple fact alone. My, mm. my blood pressure is already going up. I go up. I have the interaction. I would like to declare unloaded firearms. She gives me the card, sign it. At this particular airport, this is one of those places where they say, stand over there for 20 minutes, and if we need you, we'll call you. Otherwise, you're good. To this point, at this airport that I've flown out of several times, they've never called. Oh, no. Ever. And so I stand there for about seven minutes, and I'm like, yeah, there go. I'm, I'm, I'm rolling the dice. I'm going for it. So I went upstairs. Oh, it's cringeworthy. Went up, got in the TSA line, started walking through there, and my phone rang. <sighs> it's a number. Oh, shoot. Bleep that out. <laughs> um, <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> I could have been anybody. Um, but uh, so they're like, we need you to come in. We need your keys. All right. Go back downstairs. Hand them the, and the lady's like, all right, give me your keys. I'll take it back to TSA. I'm like, no, I would, I would really like to be present. And she's like, what? I'm like, there's a federally regulated item in that in that case. There's an SBR and a suppressor in there. So I'm like, I need to be present for that to be opened, which totally did not compute with this lady. So I was like, just call them. Is there any better way to handle that though? That interaction. I mean, you you (sighs) said what you said to me. It just it's kind of like I guess if I didn't know what that was, I might be like, what's going on? But at the same time, it's the law. At that point, it's the law, right? Yeah, it's It's, not. You can't even. It's a federal. It's not just your airline policy. If your wife's not on your firearm stress, you can't even let her know your safe combination legally. Right. For for SBRs and suppressors. So right. And so right. here's where I conducted myself a little bit differently than Ruben has suggested before. And this is where I will never do this again. I was like, I know the rules. Have them come out here. So they, had, they sent the TSA. Oh, he'll be five minutes. Great. He comes out. It's like, hey, man, I need your keys. And I'm like, can't do that. I have a federally regulated item in there. I would like to be present when it's opened. He's like, can't do it. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's the law. He's like, what's in there? And I'm like, a short barrel rifle and a suppressor. He's like, do you have a stamp for it? I said, of course I do. And he's like, well, uh, this, the area is behind, you know, whatever access point. He's like, no civilians are allowed back there. I'm like, well, I'm, you know, legally I'm supposed to be present. So what are we going to do? He's like, your options are to give me the, you know, and I've postured myself now as like, you're going to let me back there, which is invoking the equal and opposite response from him. He's like, you have something. Well, and you kind yeah, of, right. at least from the sounds of it, you're kind of both in a pickle. A little like, bit. Like, he's got a rule that you're not allowed back there. Yeah. You've got a rule. I need to be there. Right. And so, so he's like, your options are give me the key or I can cut your lock. And I was like, well, can I take a picture of your badge? He's like, sure, why? Click. And I was like, I just want to let the ATF know who they can come talk to if my stuff doesn't show up on the other end. He's like, fair enough. Disappears behind the door. We're about 10 minutes away from 
recording time, right? When this started, five minutes go by, six, seven. I'm on my way to a trade show like after there. this. Like, <laughs> I'm on my way to another business thing, and I'm going to be late for no other reason than I'm stupid. Um, <laughs> and, and it's like, all right, they started boarding. You even get the cute little text from the airline, you're boarding now, and I'm not even through TSA yet, and there's a half-hour line upstairs. Like, no, no kidding. And uh, waiting another five minutes, and he comes back and hands me keys. Yep, you're good to go, man. And he's like, here's, here's a picture. This is what's inside. Here's how I locked it back up, put a zip tie on it. So if that zip tie is cut, you'll know it was tampered with. And I was like, all right, good to go. And then I'm just like, I've missed my flight. I have, I have no idea what I'm going to do. And I was like, hey, so I understand that you are under no obligation to help me. But there's a half hour line upstairs, and my flight started boarding five minutes ago. Is there any way you can help me get past the checkpoint? And he's like, well, what flight are you on? I showed him. He's like, well, you're in luck because usually I'm the, uh, the supervisor at that checkpoint. I just happen to be down here today because so-and-so was sick. He's like, you have a picture of my badge? If you go down this hallway, take a left, then take a right, and then knock three times and like duck under the stairwell, you'll get to the employee access point. If you show that guard my picture and tell him your story, he will probably let you through. All right. And this is where you could like cue the Mission Impossible music. Yeah. Because at this point, He's I no thought Mission Impossible. Adam. He's action Adam. This, <laughs> this is where I thought it was a fictitious movie. Because I start swimming through the crowd, like running upstairs, weaving in and out. And, uh, I get there, <laughs> and I show him the picture, and I tell him the story. He's like, yeah, man, whatever. And he lets me through. <laughs> he lets me through, uh, like the TSA pre-check line. And so I get through, and still, this is one of those airports where you still have to take a tram to the concourse. Mm -hmm. And there's still, so like, like getting in like right as the doors are closing on the tram, like tore my backpack off and then like when we got there I'm like prying the doors open to swim out run up an escalator which was awesome you and feel so fast when you oh, run up an escalator I was I was I've never run that fast in my life I mean if you haven't seen me in real life like I'm pretty thick all right <laughs> so I like cheese husky um so get there running 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 I get in line there's still boarding I am the fourth to last person to get on the plane that's impressive. 20 minutes after Fourth to last. Yeah, I wasn't even the last one. But you were almost, moving. almost missed my flight because I didn't allow enough time. But that's, that, that is... That's a big lesson. That is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. I've never been cavity searched. I've never gone to the dark room. Nobody's ever accused me of being a terrorist. But it has gotten to the point now where you're not always going to be able to be where they're inspecting your stuff. And that's... That's something you probably just have to be okay with yeah, if, you're gonna, bit. if you're going to fly. I think with some of that, too, like, you know, Ruben's talking about be nice. It's like, hey, it's your job. I'm going to trust that you have good intentions. Please trust that I have good intentions. And uh, Yeah, even when you get into that situation, I've always found, and I've had a couple of situations where the, the best course of action is to say, like, here's my situation. Please understand that, like, professionally, this isn't going to be good for me if I'm late for this meeting, and what can we do to get me on this plane? Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, most of the time, they're people. They understand, you know, you're just trying to do your job and uh, unforeseen circumstances, like having to stay, you know, late, hanging out with friends, in Adam's case, got right. in the way. And, well, and like you said, Adam, a lot of times what people end up hearing are the, the terror stories or whatever where you're just sort of like oh my gosh this must be such a nightmare traveling with firearms but you know for every one of those there's a number of situations where i'm sure you've had it too i've had times where i've been flying and they take you back to the now i have you know uh had it where they take you back to the room or whatever they're like can you open it up for us you know and you open it up and all of a sudden the one guy comes in and goes oh wow what is that what's that chambered in is that yeah. like is that a six five creedmoor what scope do you have on there oh you work it you know or whatever <laughs> And yeah. uh, Man, never, never leave the, the office without your walking around stickers. Yes. You can, yeah. You can buy a lot of stuff with them. Patches, <laughs> stickers. Too. Yeah, patches. Patches, yep. The, uh, my worst story is, and I don't exactly know how it happened, 
from the time I checked my guns in to when I got them back. But I was flying uh, actually to the same airport that Adam's uh, incident happened. And when, when you fly with guns, there's kind of this expectation that this person goes and they carry your, you know, your luggage with your guns and they like pass it off very kindly to the next person. Well, so this was one of those cases where they told me, hey, we have to get in your guns. It's behind the area where you can go. So we had, uh, I was on time that time. So I said, well, that's the only way that it can happen. Uh, I wasn't flying with any suppressors or any SBRs. So, uh, okay, here's my keys. So I went back there, uh, supposedly inspected what they needed to inspect, came back, gave me my keys, said, you're good to go. When you get to an airport, your guns should go to the baggage office. They should not come out on the carousel with all the rest of the people's luggage. Oh, yeah. Because if you had to go to the bathroom or you had to stop and change clothes or you decided to get something to eat after you got off the plane, your guns would be going around the carousel for everybody to grab. So, in theory, your guns are supposed to go to the baggage office. I've had In theory. Three times I've had it where my guns did not go to the baggage office. I put it at about 25% of the time it doesn't happen. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) So, this particular time... uh, Again, I was not the one that relocked my case. This is why I'm very anal about relocking my own case. Oh my gosh! I now I'm getting really stressed about this. Yeah, story. so More I'm just so going to a match because I've been late a lot, so I'm used to it. But th- I'm just going to a match. I'm not going to a sales call with a customer. I'm going to a match, and we're walking down to the baggage area, and um, we're like, "Oh, look, flight 15 is just getting on the carousel." And I see my case with my Hornady Vortex, uh, all of my stickers. First bag. First bag First coming down. Bag. Comes over the edge. Something catches on it, and it goes rear end over tea kettle down the carousel, hits the floor. One side pops open. No. And my $4,000 2011 goes spiraling out on the floor in the airport. Now, no. I have the pre-cut foam. Just like so, the movie. So it's spiraling down on the floor, and it stops at the feet of of a guy that is a law enforcement officer in this airport oh, who hey. I luckily have run into many times and interacted with, and he's a big customer of ours. My pistol stopped at his feet, and he looked up to see whose gun it was, and I am now sprinting about 100 yards out. And I run up, he's like, is this your stuff? I'm like, it is. So the first thing I did is I opened my case, put the pistol back in, he was laughing about it. And how many people in the airport are like, this is a popular tourist and vacation destination. So yes. there was about 300 people Easy. in uh, yeah. in the uh, Florida, the uh, Hawaiian shirts, you yeah. know, that yeah. you get off where you, when you get your Mai Tai, the first thing you land at the airport, all watching this happen. Yeah. And uh, lots of colors, <laughs> lots of lights. That's mine. Yeah. So <laughs> I got down there. Luckily, there's a guy there that's a law enforcement officer that literally just kind of like stepped on it as it spun up to his feet. Like, that is unbelievable. Like, is this your ball? Like, when your yeah. ball rolls into the neighbor's <laughs> yard and he stops it with his foot? Yeah, kind of did that with my pistol and um, ended up almost having an Eric Barber situation where where's my pistol? But thankfully, <laughs> got it. Can you imagine? I uncased everything and put my guns all back in. And I'm, uh, yeah. It was interesting. I mean, can you imagine if uh, that had happened? He's not there. You're not there. I mean. Yeah. Eesh. I only had one lock on my case, too. So at some point, one lock didn't get put back on. That's why I need to be I'm very anal yeah. about being the one that puts my case back on. And if I can't be, I ask him to take a picture and send it's, it to me. Show it to me, at least. That's the no, that's heebie-jeebies. Good. Did you have ammunition in the case, too? No, no not that we time. We shipped it. Oh, okay. It. okay. Yeah, we shipped it to... Freddy's. It's amazing you know, the things that like stick in your memory. Like of all, I specifically remember that we were walking up and we're like, "Oh, cool! Our luggage is going to be up first, so we can get in line at the uh, the baggage office." And our pelicans are the first two things <laughs> that hit the belt. <laughs> They're just mine. Like, is dung, dung, like, dung. Uh, yeah. Oh, I know we've gone way nightmare. over here. Real quick though, keys or codes for your loss? Keys. Keys. Okay. Non TSA. Although just this week I had a non TSA lock somehow opened and in- inspected and then put back. I've seen Mission Impossible. I'm not That's sure possible. how they do that. I'm pretty sure. I've been a big bump, codes guy. Pretty sure locks, it's illegal. But bumping locks. Yeah. <laughs> I've been a, I've been a codes guy because what if you lose your key? Yeah. Don't I mean, your don't, your don't lose your keys, your keys, right? But so that that's our horror stories. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, on that note, 
I don't know how long I stood oh, in front of the camera. I don't think that camera was on me likely with my mouth again. Oh, my gosh. Um, I probably so, look like a deer in the headlights from both wow, those stories. Wow, snap back to reality. Uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in. That was some crazy stuff. We have one more of these, too. So more traveling with firearms and ammunition next week or next time. So catch you next time. Bye, Bye. guys. Peace.